Hey everybody, hope you guys are doing all right. So this is a video on how we determine our nonprofit price. And just bear with me because it's a little wordy and I'm not the best with arithmetic, but I think it makes good sense. And so I hope uh, it makes good sense to you too. Um, all right, here we go. How we determine the price of a product. These are the contributing factors to how we come about our price. Price of land divided by how many parcels or areas we have designated each with individual specific purpose. So price of land divided by the amount of divisions we have. Example, $300,000 for the entire land, and let's say there are 13 divisions. So we divide 300,000 by 13, and that gives us the value of each of the 13 divisions. So when we do this arithmetic, we come up with $23,076 um, is how much each division will cost. <clears throat> land. So then based on what area slash division a particular product comes from, we zero in on that division, use its value number, which is the 23,000 for each division, um, that's just for this example, um, and divide that value number by the number of potential products one can share for that specific area. And then, and th this then gives us the price as far as it is concerned with the overall price of land and usage of area of land a particular product uses. So our division number is 23,076. And mind you, this is just a rough estimate and this is coming from the pretext that all divisions are of equal value and thus size as well, which most likely won't be true. But until I know exactly what land will be available for use, I won't be able to give you an exact number value of each individual division. So example, with our division value number of 23,076, and let's say we are working to find the price of a hemp made shirt or cloth. And let's say we are able to do, this is just a rough estimate, make a thousand shirts or pieces of cloth in our division or area just for hemp and shirts and cloth. So we now take our division number, which is 23,076, and divide it by a thousand for each, for the thousand units we can make on that one division, and that gives us about $23. And so now, so now we are working with the number 23 for each individual shirt or piece of cloth, as far as a nonprofit price is concerned. <clears throat> manual labor. Um, then we will also need to add up the total amount <clears throat> of manual labor hours. This includes time spent setting up grow operation, maintaining grow area, and cultivating product to be ready for exchange. Example, this is again a rough estimate, but let's say it takes a total of an hour per each individual unit, and again, we are using the hemp slash shirt and cloth example, and so we are working with a thousand units, and so that's a thousand hours for the entire division and an hour per product. So now we add the minimum wage of an hour, which let's just say is $10 an hour, um, to the individual product price of 23, and you now get $33. <clears throat> All right, so water usage. We also need to include the cost of water usage for each product, and we determine this by only offering our water at nonprofit added prices. We gather that price by first looking into water rights for our state and obeying them, and then you calculate based on how much water access one has and how much a small portion of water actually is in correlation to what we are allowed to use based on overall amount, and then how much time and labor is needed to distribute the water, and that gives you a nonprofit price based on how much it actually costs to produce this product. So with water, it gets a little tricky. For one here in Southern Oregon, we receive an average of 18.43 inches of rainfall each year. Things grow well in the wild and unaltered states here, and so I am making an assumption here, but I don't think it would take much more than a half hour of constant watering to amount to the needed amount, and this is again with the 18.4 inches of rainfall we get in addition. So this is a super rough high estimate, I think, but let's say it's $5 per product which I think is too high, but for the sake of this example, we will use $5. And so we add that $5 to our above number of 33 and we get 38. Again, this is a high estimate and I think a, it's an estimate, I think it's a high estimate. So at the $38, but it is just, <clears throat> is just under the same most, uh, yes, because 38 bucks is just about how much you get a sweatshirt for, but and it's much more expensive than most t-shirts cost. Um, but again, it's a rough estimate, and the numbers will change. The, they will be the variables, but the overall equation will, should stay the same. Um, 
So yeah, that gives you some info on the wire and then for tools. Uh, so to break down how much of an effect one should has on an entire wet. Well, so to break down how much of an effect one shovel has on an entire farm is a bit much. And so if it if it's small tools like a shovel or something, then we will just use these tools and not include them in the price as they would they would be extremely small anyway but the manual labor will still be added into the price. We're just not gonna do the manual labor plus the price of the shovel, you know, and in correlation to how much time the shovel was used, that just gets a little too complicated. Um, but however, things like dump trucks, tractors, and or cranes slash other equipment that are expensive will need to be incorporated in the price. So we would include the total duration and the hourly rate used for each piece of equipment. All right, so again, you know, I'm sorry if that sounded a little wordy and confusing. Um, hopefully it made good sense to you guys. Um, and yeah, uh, if you guys have any feedback, I'd love to hear because this is, like I said, one of the most challenging parts of the project that I've been working on. But uh, yeah, I'm actually feel pretty good about this. So yeah, hope you guys do too and have a good day. All right.